our today's topic is electric potential and potential difference before going into into the standard definition of electric potential and potential difference let us understand the meaning of word potential to understand it we will first take the example of water again here if we have a tube and one end of the tube is say a and other end is b if the water has to flow from end a towards end b then it is very then it is necessary that the water pressure pressure at a should be higher than water pressure at b so the pressure here should be lower than the pressure at the end a then only water will flow from from the end that has a higher pressure towards the end that has a lower pressure this pressure difference is very important for the water to flow in our day to day life we have generally experiences that water always flows from the from the end that has a higher pressure towards the end that has a lower pressure this is a this is a general thing that we all have witnessed in our day to day life the same principle is applicable to the flow of electrons or charges in a conductor if we have a conductor and the conductor has two edges one is suppose marked as end a another side is marked as end b if the electrons have to flow from end a towards end b then it is important that electric pressure similar to the water pressure the electric pressure at end a should be higher and electric pressure at end b should be lower then only electrons will move from the end that has higher electric pressure towards the end that has lower electric pressure this electric pressure in physics is called potential we do not call this as electric pressure or that we call it electric potential so what is electric potential electric potential is similar to the water pressure and it forces the electrons to move from the end that is higher electric potential towards the end that is a lower potential so these two ends have actually the potential difference the difference is called electric potential difference and this electric potential difference is actually responsible for the flow of electron so so we should keep this in mind that electric charge always flows from the end that has higher electric potential towards the end that has lower electric potential and what is this potential this potential is simply the electric pressure that forces the electrons to flow towards the end that has a lower electric potential or electric pressure 
so charge is flow only when there is potential difference this potential difference is also called voltage and we have already taken analogy or example of water that water flows from high pressure towards the low pressure you can see this is a high pressure and and it is flowing towards the lower pressure end same is applicable to the conductor electrons flow from a high pressure end toward the low pressure and and here we call the water pressure but in case of conductor we call it the electric potential and the difference that is the difference of electric potential across the two terminals of a conductor that is called electric potential difference or voltage here you can see we have a two terminals of a conductor one is the terminal P and another is terminal Q. Terminal P is positive, positive means that this has a higher electric potential and terminal Q is negative, negative means this has a this has a lower electric potential. So this is a positive terminal that means it has higher electric potential where terminal Q has a lower electric potential. For example, if P has a potential of 10, terminal Q has a potential of 5. So the potential difference between two ends is P minus Q, that is 10 minus 5. So the potential difference is 5. So the electrons will move from high potential end toward the lower potential at this craters. The difference of potential what we called potential difference or voltage so current will start flowing because the high pressure area will force electrons to move toward the lower pressure area so the electrons will move from high electric pressure zone toward the lower electric pressure zone and due to this flow of electrons and electric current will be created The terminal P is a high potential and terminal Q is a lower potential end. So electron will flow from higher potential end toward the lower potential end as this flow of electron will create the electric current. And due to this flow of electrons, this is a bulb here, this bulb will light up. So the potential difference causes the charge to flow from higher potential end to lower potential end. And it generated electric current that has caused the bulb to light up. Now let us give the formal, formal definition of electric potential and electric potential difference. Formally we say suppose if this is a conductor and this is a, a end of the conductor and this is a B end of the conductor and electrons move from the end that have a higher electric potential toward the end that has a lower electric potential electron will be forced to move from higher electric potential towards the lower electric potential and this will involve the Conception of energy if the electron will move from one end to the another end some work has to be done Some energy has to be spent to move this electron from a higher pressure zone toward the lower pressure zone and This work done is represented as W and Electric potential is defined as how much work is to be done to move this charge from one end to the another end that is that uh, that work done to move the charge from one end to the another end is called the electric potential difference it is actually defined in terms of the work done same is the case with electric potential electric potential is defined as how much work has to be done to move a charge from infinity to a particular point
let me explain this a bit suppose if a charge is located at at some infinity point and we have to uh, move the charge to point a so obviously this will involve some work if we have to take this electron and move all along the way up to the point A, this will involve the performance of some work. Say W is the work and Q is the charge that is moved from infinity point to A. So the work that we have to do to move this charge from infinity to point A is called electric potential. electric potential at A. Similarly, if we have two pointers A and B, if we have to move the charge Q from point B to point A, then the work that we do, suppose that is W, the work that we do to move this charge Q from B to A is called potential difference between these two pointers point A and point B. So electric potential is defined as work done in moving a charge from infinity to a particular point. Similarly electric potential difference is the difference between potential at two pointers the point A and point B. As I already said, potential difference is defined as the work done to move a charge from one point to another point and mathematically it is shown as V is equal to W divided by Q where V is the potential difference or it is also called voltage as I already said and it is represented as V, V is the voltage or potential difference and is and is equal to W divided by Q where Q is the work done and where W is the work done and Q is the charge work done in moving a charge from one point to another point. S unit of potential is volt. Volt is the potential. S I unit of potential difference or voltage. Here the charges are moving randomly as there is no electric potential difference between point A and B when the electric potential difference is created between point A and point B point A has a higher electric potential than point B so electrons start moving from the high potential zone towards the lower potential zone if we have to measure the potential difference or voltage we can use the instrument called voltmeter voltmeter is used to measure the voltage or potential difference and whenever this voltmeter is to be used it has to be used in parallel that means this is a circuit it is connected in parallel to the circuit this is a circuit and voltmeter is connected in parallel to the circuit to measure the potential difference here we can see the voltmeter and this voltmeter has been connected in a parallel to measure the voltage or potential difference. Now what is the relationship between potential difference difference and current? If we have a two ends of a conductor and there is this is a higher potential end this is a lower potential end then the current will flow from higher potential end toward the lower potential end if we create more pressure at this end than this end then the potential difference will be higher the flow of current will actually increase so more the potential difference more the pressure difference more electricity will be generated this is a general principle you can see it in case of water if the pressure difference between the two ends of a pipe or two ends of a tube is higher then the water current flow will be larger in magnitude so this is the principle 
higher the potential difference higher will be the flow of current if potential difference will increase the flow of current will increase if potential difference will decrease the pressure across the two terminal will decrease then obviously the current will decrease so this is the relation higher the voltage or higher the potential difference higher will be the flow of current this takes us to the ohm's law what ohm's law says is that voltage or potential difference is directly proportional to the current this means if the pressure difference or potential difference across two terminals of a conductor increases as i already said there will be more electric current greater the voltage greater will be the electric current so voltage is directly proportional to the current directly proportional to the current means if we increase the magnitude of voltage if we increase the potential difference against uh, across the two ends of a conductor then the current will increase here ohm says that current that is flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference that we already said but the other condition other conditions have to be kept constant for example temperature or other physical uh, qualities or physical properties of the conductor have to be kept constant the temperature of the conductor have to be kept constant other physical properties of the conductor have to be kept constant then only then the potential difference will be directly proportional to the electric current so you have to keep other conditions constant say temperature or other physical condition so ohm's law is applicable only when the temperature is kept constant and other physical qualities or properties of the conductor are kept constant then the voltage will be directly proportional to the electric current this relationship between voltage and current is called ohm's law here you can see that voltage is directly proportional voltage is directly proportional to current here voltage is directly proportional to the current as per ohm's law if we have to show this graphically we can show this in this way this is a graph suppose this is current and this is voltage then as the voltage will increase as the voltage will increase the current will also increase as the voltage will increase the current will go on increasing so the graph will be a straight line so as per ohm's law the graph will be the straight line here you can see graph is a straight line this is a voltage and this is current this is current and this is the ohm's law which is a constant or straight curve so ohm's law says that voltage is directly proportional to the current directly proportional as i already said means if we increase the voltage then the current will increase when this sign proportionality sign is replaced by equality sign equality sign then here we have to apply the constant so voltage is equal to current into constant and this constant is called r r r minus resistance of the conductor okay here you can see we have replaced the proportionality sign with equality sign and when we replace the 
proportionality sign we have to apply the constant here we have applied the constant in case of ohm's law this constant is called resistance and it is shown by i r so v is equal to current into resistance this is ohm's law voltage is equal to current into resistance where voltage is the potential difference it is also called a potential difference v is potential difference or voltage i is current and r is resistance but you have to keep in mind that when the v when will be the v equal to ir only when other condition like temperature and other physical properties of the conductor will remain constant if the temperature and other physical properties of the conductor changes then then this equation v is equal to i into r will not hold true this will hold true only when other physical properties of the conductor like temperature and other properties remain constant they do not change at constant temperature and when other physical properties are kept constant as already as i already said then the current that is flowing through the conductor will be directly proportional to the potential difference and if we put this graphically if this is the voltage and this is the current then this v will be equal to ir this r is a constant then this graph this graph shows the r this is a voltage this is a current and this straight line is resistance which will always remain as the constant here the si unit of resistance is ohm ohm is the si unit of resistance and it is shown by sin omega this is the sign symbol to represent the resistance and it is si unit is ohm this is it is s unit now what is resistance resistance is defined as if v is equal to ir then r is equal to v divided by i if we move i towards the left side of the equation it will get divided to v then r will be equal to v divided by i so resistance mathematically resistance is defined as ratio of voltage and electric current here resistance is defined as the ratio of potential difference that is voltage and electric current that is flowing through it so r is equal to v divided by i it can be derived from equation v is equal to i i r so r is equal to v divided by i as i already said resistance as a unit of resistance is ohm and it is denoted by symbol omega in terms of physical property resistance is defined as how much resistance a conductor offers to the flow of electric current for example if we have a conductor if we have a conductor when the electrons flow through this conductor this conductor actually creates hindrance in the flow of current how much a hindrance how much hindrance a conductor can produce to the flow of electric current that is called the resistance of the conductor and it varies from conductor to conductor for example if we have two conductor one is made up of copper and another is made up of iron when the electrons will flow through through this conductor which is made up of copper then this conductor will offer some resistance it will hinder the flow of electric current that is called it is resistance say if r c is the resistance of copper similarly when the electrons will flow through through this iron rod it will also offer some resistance to the flow of current and that resistance is called 
and that hindrance is called a resistance of this conductor say we represent it it is resistance by r r this r c that is resistance of copper will be different from the resistance of iron and it varies from conductor to conductor if a conductor has a higher degree of resistance it will allow very it will not allow the free flow of electricity so higher the resistance lower will be the flow of electricity or electric current through that conductor greater the resistance uh, sorry lower the resistance greater will be the flow of electric current through that conductor you can see here that electric current that resistance is the measure of measure of hindrance that is offered by a conductor to the flow of electricity or electric current if the conductor has a lower degree of resistance it will be a good conductor because it will allow greater amount of electricity to flow through it if it has a higher resistance it will be a bad conductor because it will not allow a high magnitude of electric current to flow through it okay we have discussed two main concepts here one is the potential and potential difference second is the ohm's law and we also discussed resistance now is the summary part potential difference is equal to is, is also called voltage and is equal to work divided by charge si unit of potential difference is volt and it is measured by voltmeter which is connected in parallel ohm's law deals with the relationship between voltage and current and as per ohm's law voltage is equal to current into resistance but for this equation to hold true we have to keep the temperature and other physical properties constant resistance is the measure of measure of resist measure of resistance that is shown by conductor to the flow of current it is si unit is ohm and it is derived as ratio of voltage and current